Well, we've all heard the stories. Natural gas drilling contaminating groundwater and sickening residents. We've seen the videos where one person after another sets their tap water on fire. Heck, we here at RT have even filmed that with our own cameras. But it looks like the damage hydraulic fracturing causes might go even deeper than previously thought. How deep? All the way down to the Earth's fault lines. Researchers now say that, extradition, uh, that this extraction method actually causes earthquakes, hundreds of them. This is the first time that causation instead of correlation has been linked to hydraulic fracturing. Now, you may already know how the method works, but here's a quick refresher course. Natural gas companies come in and dig a well thousands of feet down into the Earth's surface into the shale rock formation. This can be seven, eight, nine thousand feet below the Earth's surface. From there, the company injects millions of gallons of water and sand and chemicals into the shale rock formation under extremely high pressure, causing that rock to actually crack or fracture. And that process releases natural gas bubbles to rise to the surface uh, for the natural gas companies to collect. But a new report by British Columbia Oil and Gas Commission says that the fluid is injected um, and that flows into pre-existing faults, and then that can cause these faults to slip, thus creating an earthquake. So here to get to the root of this problem with me is Mike Ludwig. He's a reporter from Truthout. Hey there, Mike. First of all, can you explain this correlation between hydraulic fracturing and the earthquakes? I, I did a little bit there in the intro, but if you could just really delve into it for me. Absolutely. I mean, they're taking sand and water, and they're taking uh, industrial chemicals, and they're pumping them deep below the earth. And they actually, you know, in a sense, are already creating many earthquakes when they break up the earth to release this oil and gas. Uh, but what we're seeing in this report here is that here, if you have an area where there's some pre-existing faults, uh, these liquids, these fracking liquids they use to break up the, the rock can get in there, lubricate them, and cause series of other small earthquakes. Now, uh, in the past, you know, fracking has been linked to earthquakes in, in Arkansas. Fracking wastewater injection caused earthquakes in Ohio. What the industry has repeatedly said is that it's very rare, and compared to the number of operations that are out there, it barely ever happens. But what we're seeing here in this case, in this report, is that it could actually be much more common than previously thought. We just haven't had the kind of seismological data to put it all together. And, of course, we are starting to see some of that, uh, that data come out. One area in particular is in Ohio. Um, can you go ahead and talk about what they found with the earthquakes in Ohio, if you do know, and where those epicenters for those earthquakes were located? Right. Now, uh, in about 2010 to two, or excuse me, 2011 to early 2012, there was a series of 12 small earthquakes uh, with the final earthquake ranging about 4.5 on the Richter scale. Now, that was actually felt for miles around. And these all happened near Youngstown in uh, northeastern Ohio. Now, I investigated these earthquakes earlier this summer and found out that regulators actually had this injection well. It wasn't a fracking well, but they were taking wastewater from fracking operations and injecting them into an older well. Uh, they had had this at the highest pressure of any well in Ohio, and they ignored seismological data showing that earthquakes started to erupt in that area. And they continued to allow the pressure of this well to increase until finally the governor had to step in and shut it down uh, last January. And so this, uh, this injection well full of wastewater was actually allowing the wastewater to seep into a pre-Cambrian, pre-existing fault that caused the earthquakes. And we do know that, just to put this in perspective, Mike, that these earthquakes are all relatively small. They're between 2.2 and 3.8 on the Richter scale. Many of them are not even felt on the Earth's surface, and no damage has been caused to this point. So why should people be worried? Well, there was some mineral damage actually caused in Arkansas and Ohio in some earthquakes that were eventually linked to fracking after a lot of review and a lot of kind of going back and forth among state scientists and geologists. There has been some minor damage. But what we have to worry about here is that it, there's an industry that is moving and drilling much faster than regulators, and as we can see with this report just coming out today, much faster than scientists. And so there's a lot that we still don't know. And as it rapidly expands, we have to wonder who's going to step in and make sure they don't cause some problems that are bigger than we've already seen, maybe some shakeups that are perhaps more violent. Um, and also that our water supplies aren't in danger when you're breaking rock and you're causing many earthquakes. What can, you know, is it possible for these chemicals to migrate into aquifers and into drinking water supplies? And that is another big concern. 
And I want to know from you, from all your reports and from the people that you've talked to, do you think that this has the potential to have serious consequences in the future? What are starting out at small earthquakes? Could they be potentially become big ones? I don't know if these could ever become very big earthquakes. I think it's possible that if a very large pre-existing fault uh, somehow gets lubricated and maybe ge geologists have a massive group, we could have something major. But there are some areas of the country with histories of earthquakes where there are active drilling happening right now. Uh, so what is important is that we have um, really solid uh, seismological data and really solid geological oversight uh, by regulators and, uh, you know, by independent uh, groups. And Mike, I do want to go ahead and bring up a graphic really quickly, kind of showing where all of these um, fracturing sites are within the U.S. Most of them are in um, for, uh, Pennsylvania. Some are in Colorado, Texas, uh, North Dakota. So they're all over the place. And if you see all those little black dots on your screen, those are where all of the so-called fraccidents have happened. Not necessarily earthquakes, but fraccidents themselves of spilling and whatnot. So um, given all of these areas, I mean, not very many of uh, are happening in California. California, of course, is where most of the earthquakes um, happen in, in, um, in the U.S. So uh, do these companies consider where these fault lines are, or should they in the future, and will this research help them to figure that out? I, I think that they do consider where these fault lines are, but you have to realize their imperative is to get the most out of their drilling as quickly as possible. Uh, if they're taking all the time to make sure that they're avoiding faults, obviously they haven't. I mean, a fault was not avoided in Ohio. Uh, there's been small earthquakes, you know, measured here in British Columbia. And actually, some of these drilling intensity zones, like in Arkansas, are in areas where historically there have been some massive earthquakes. So it's, you know, I can't speak for every single company. We hope that they're all doing their job right. But as we can see, there's already been some accidents. Uh, so, you know, that, that is some cause for concern. And, uh, you know, Arkansas is one of the places where thousands of very minor but thousands of earthquakes were recorded after intense drilling has happened. There's been more problems, too. Recently, uh, gas and drilling um, related disaster just happened where I am in, in Louisiana, where a massive five and a half acre sinkhole just opened up uh, in the bayous and they had to evacuate 150 people. And that is, be that is in an area that has been drilled for 20 years. Uh, Pennsylvania hasn't been drilled that heavily for 20 years. What is Pennsylvania going to look like? in 20 years. I mean, these are all the kinds of questions we have to be asking ourselves. Mike, we have only a very short time, about 30 seconds left, but I do have to get to some of the solutions. One of the solutions that the BC Oil and Gas Commission reported was simply lowering the pressure of the water being injected into the ground. Very quickly, is that viable? I think that that could help, but we really need solid seismological data. We need seismometers in every area where there's major gas drilling happening that did not happen in Ohio, it was not happening in British Columbia, and it was not happening in Arkansas, and we saw earthquakes happen. We need that. We need that data. Mike Ludwig, reporter for Truthout, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.